Welcome back to part two of Postseason Awards, Who You Got? And again, this is Coach Evans with some friends of mine. So let's get right into part two of who these guys picking for the Postseason Awards in the NFL. All right, next up, we have a member of the Deep Cover Podcast. You always see Chris just joking from the Deep Cover Podcast. Now you get to see one of his compadres on here with me today. And we have Michael Crawford here. I appreciate you for joining me, Mike. How you doing, man? I'm chilling, Coach. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, one-third, the weakest link, I like to say, of the Deep Cover podcast. Chris and Kerry really be holding it down, but uh, appreciate you uh, having me on. No problem, no problem. So what we're going to do is like I've been asking people for their opinion on who should win these awards. So if you just tell me who you think should win it and a little synopsis of why, and then we'll roll through them. All right? First up is the Comeback Player of the Year. Um, Joe Flacco, who we all know, DeMar Hamlin, we know what happened to him. Baker shocked some people. Matthew Stafford is Matthew Stafford and Tua Tonga Valoa. Out of those five, who you got? Man, it's it's tough because there's different reasons. Like you said, we all know Flacco. You know, it's kind of a feel-good story. Him kind of hitting a little run at, what, damn near 40 years old. Right. DeMar, man, that's just a good life story. You know what I'm saying? Just the fact that that dude is alive and still able to come back and play ball. But I think I got to go with Baker. Okay. I I go with Baker out of this list because – I mean, he had that little cup of coffee with the Rams towards the end of last season where he kind of showed a little something. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Baker was, what, on his third team? Now on is on his third team? Uh, Cleveland, Carolina, Rams. Oh, he got by Carolina, didn't he? <laughs> I did forget about Carolina. That's right. Sam Darnold, mm -hmm. got, I guess, got the gig over him. This is so, Yep. So, you know, he was kind of in that, that no man's land territory of kind of being like NFL left for dead. Right. And uh, he, he bought out this year down there in Tampa. He did. Bought, got himself up probably another contract and maybe probably one last payday. And got his OC a uh, head coaching job. Sure <laughs> did. Sure did. Canellas went to Carolina. Man. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Second one. Assistant coach of the year. We got Ben Johnson from the Lions. Uh, the two Baltimore Ravens with Mike McDonald and Todd Munkin, Jim Schwartz, who had a pretty good defense, and Bobby Slowick, who had who led the upstart te upstart Texans to a playoff victory. My Ravens bias, you know, is hitting, <laughs> hitting me hard right now. <laughs> so I want to go with Mike McDonald, even between the two, even between the two Ravens coordinators. And look, uh, Munkin has done a hell of a job on the offensive side of the ball this year, but. Uh, what McDonald has, is doing over there with that defense this year is, is special. That's a yeah. special group over there. It's like a historically special group, too. I don't know if everybody really understands Triple Triple like Triple how Triple. good they are historically. Now, Slowick, hey, look, him and Stroud, you know, the way that they got hot and started rolling at the end of the season, you got to give that a nod, too. But, yeah, I'm going I'm to I'm go with Mike Matt. Okay. Not a bad pick. And really no bad picks on here, I don't think, because um, – Think about what Schwartz did. Uh, they had the number one defense statistically for most of the year with no offense. Yeah. <laughs> with no offense helping them at all. True. Ne next one, head coach of the year. Kneecaps, uh, our guy Harps, um, D'Amico in his first year, Shanahan, and Kevin Stefanski. Another tough one, but uh, – it's got to be D'Amico for me out of this list. I mean, I respect everything that Dan Campbell has done. I mean, that's a that's a hell of a turnaround because we know what the Lions have been. Mm -hmm. um, but they kind of were showing last year that they were trending in this direction. Of course, they took another step this year. But D'Amico, man, first-year head coach, rookie QB, coming into that Houston situation where, you know, it wasn't a whole lot um, of talent necessarily on that roster. You know, a few players here and there. But to make the run that they made in his first year, I got to give it to Tamigo. Nothing wrong with that. Man. First year coach, first year quarterback, uh, young defense, a uh, new system. New, and this is us over, overall because they've fired two straight one year coaches. Mm -hmm. One year done for uh, who was the guy that came from Baltimore? Um, Cully. Uh, uh, Cully. Uh, and then one year done for um, uh, Greybeard. Um, yeah, love, it. love it, love it. Mm -hmm. And so, <laughs> like D'Amico has come down and went from those two disasters to a first round playoff win. So, I, I nothing wrong with that pick at all. I totally understand yeah. it. Next up, defensive rookie of the year. Um, Will Anderson Jr. from the Texans, Jalen Carter, Joey Porter Jr., who we're familiar with, Kobe Turner, 
and Devon or Witherspoon. Yeah, I, you know, before Philly hit their little skid, I probably would have gone with Jalen Carter. Mm-hmm. And it's not a reflection on him that you know they brought Matt Patricia in there, <laughs> but uh, I'm I'm gonna go with Will Anderson out of this group right now just because you know he may not have like the big sack numbers or whatever, but we've seen him twice this year mm-hmm. uh, play the Ravens, and you know in addition to some other games we probably checked out. And same thing you saw at Alabama, consistent pressure, consistent yep. pressure, plays the pass, plays the run, you know, just all out effort, a motor that don't stop. Uh, and just one of them cornerstone pieces for me and a young dude, you know, a rookie. Yeah. I mean, same thing for Jalen, but uh, and well, I mean, they're all rookies. Uh, I'm gonna go with Will, I'm gonna stick with Will. Gotcha. And um, these other guys had great seasons, but and I'm with you. Uh, Jalen Carter probably would have been my pick, but that that fall off gonna kind of hurt him in my in my opinion. Yeah, all right, offensive player of the year, offensive rookie of the year. I'm sorry. Jameer Gibbs, Sam Laporta, two, two Lions, Puka Nakua, uh, Bijan, and C.J. Stroud. I mean, to me, this is a, this a two-person race. This between Puka and C.J. Mm-hmm. Uh, Puka put up numbers that no other rookie wide receiver has put up, but I'm going to go C.J. Okay. Um, similar, similar reasons that I was going with D'Amico for uh, head coach of the year. Just, you know, I know it's rookie, so it's everybody's first year, but quarterback, we all know. You know, probably the most you know toughest position to play out there on the football field, and to come in and play as well as he did over the course of the year, and you know help guide that team into the playoffs. I mean, I think that's that's just hard to do for a rookie QB. I mean, we've seen a handful of guys do it over the years, um, but it's it's really difficult to do. So I got to get a nod to CJ. All right, and Puka had a great year, but uh, I definitely understand why CJ. Is in there because at one point CJ hadn't even thrown an interception. It was like week nine or eight or something like that before he even threw an interception, maybe seven. Yeah. But defensive coach. player of the year, Mr. Pick Six, Devron Bland. You got Max <laughs> Crosby, Mad Max, Miles Garrett, uh, Michael Parsons, and uh, Mr. Lead the NFL in sacks and disrupt every Ravens game that he could possibly do. TJ White. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is a tough list right here. You got a bunch of good names on this list. Like you said, you could go in any direction. I'm going to go Miles Garrett, though. I'm okay. going to go Miles Garrett. Um, like you said, that statistically best defense in the league and not getting really much help uh, at all mm-hmm. over there on offense. But he's one of those guys, and he's not the only guy on this list. There's other guys on this list that are like that. But he's one of those guys that will wreck your game. I mean, Mike mm-hmm. is like that will wreck your game. TJ will wreck your game. Mike probably will wreck your game. <laughs> but Garrett, though, man, it's just something different about him. They be his size, the way he moves at that size, and how disruptive he is. And he puts on numbers. You know, mm-hmm. he, he put it in the paint, too. It ain't just about getting pressures. He does a lot of that. But he get them sack numbers, too. So I'm going to go with Garrett. Gotcha. And Miles is, is a beast because you don't really hear about anybody else having, you know, on the other side of him is miles make that whole defense go in my opinion yep. he allows them to play that man-to-man coverage on the back end because that's all they want to do anyway is play cover one yep um offensive player of the year cheetah uh our guy lamar cd lamb who had big receiving numbers cmc who was consistent as ever and then dak put up some godly numbers uh throwing a ball too yeah hey look we already know where i'm going with this <laughs> forget the numbers <laughs> Throw the numbers out the window. It's got to be number eight. It's got to be Lamar Jackson. I mean, we saw it just in this most recent game, but really it's been throughout the season, Mm -hmm. right? If you're the most outstanding player, most valuable player, however you want to define it, could any of us see the Ravens doing what they did against the the Texans in that that second half without Lamar? I mean, is there anybody that's going to give you that performance? or any of the performances he's given you throughout the season. Think about all of the good teams they played and how they just beat the brakes off of them. Yep. So to me, you talk about most outstanding, most valuable, that that definition, that conversation, is Lamar this year. Because without him, it's not the same offense. Not anywhere near the same offense. Gotcha. So do we pull the ultimate double dip and go MVP? Oh, Lord. I forgot MVP was coming. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. You, you want you want to pull your offensive player back? <sighs> I don't know who else I could have given it to, though. I can't really, you know, Dak, hey, look, put up some good numbers in the regular season, but you know that that, that playoff thing, man, that's 
That's tough. Yeah, here's what I'll do. I'll do CMC, most outstanding player. I'll do Lamar, MVP. I'll do that. Okay. I'll do that. Uh, and you know, of, I think you can make the case for the double dip. I think you can make mm-hmm. the case, but I'm going to split it. You definitely can make the case for it. I agree 100%. But um, why is well, you kind of hint on hinted on why Lamar's your MVP. Uh, any other reasons you want to talk about what Aiden's done this year? No, I mean, I, I pretty much gave it in the previous categories. Just you know, he is that offense, and it it doesn't matter who the, it hasn't mattered who the coordinator is. He is the offense on this team. <laughs> exactly, he's exactly. what makes me. That's and the he's, uh, he's finally came out of that. I want to say quiet shell, but he's. Everybody knows he he's vocal now. He's like he's matured into that guy. Like, hey, I know I'm one of the leaders, and instead of just leading by example, I gotta I gotta be some rah rah too. Yeah, yeah, you got to hear me, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I appreciate you for taking the time out to do this with me. Um, we'll let the people know, and we already talked about it when we started, but where they can find you, um, and how often you guys coming out because we know <laughs> we know with the deep cover schedule by talking to Chris. Uh, you know, sometimes it's there, sometimes it ain't. <laughs> yeah, we always say we the most uh we the most consistent, inconsistent uh podcast in the game. Uh yeah, man, that schedule. Hey, look, the goal is every week, but it ain't really been nowhere near that this season just because of stuff we all got going on in our families. But you can always hit up the feed. We are out there on iTunes, wherever you get your podcast from. Uh same thing with the show on that same feed, just a different name. I do with mm-hmm. Denar Melton called the Fire Zone Show, where we do talk defense exclusively on that show and that one has been pretty much every week because denard is is he don't play he he'll hit me up <laughs> getting this thing so we can record this <laughs> he's so, particular about them times yeah yeah he's serious about it he, but you know hey you i ain't gotta tell you he was defensive coach you know how mm-hmm. they do that so, i do know. i do they they all about numbers and tendencies and and you know all, all the offensive guys we just fly. we'll draw some up in the dirt in a heartbeat <laughs> yeah no nah, he, he's serious with it so yeah but a little bit more a little bit more regular uh, release uh, pattern to Fire Zone show, but DCP, yeah, man, just check that same feed. We there when we there, we not when we not. But uh, <laughs> we we always kick it together, no matter what. Even when the pod ain't out, we talk to each other probably like every day, at least every day, a couple times a day. So you know, we still all cool. It ain't nothing like that going on. Gotcha. And I, again, I appreciate you for coming through, man. And um, we'll wrap this thing on up, man. All right. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate. It. All right, next up, I got one of my film brothers with me, Cole, uh, from the Road Graders podcast. So, um, you know, he's coming. He's going to the game this weekend. So if you see him in the, in the streets, you know, shout him out, holler at him, congratulate him, and, and all that good stuff. And, and you might get a shout out on, on his channel, too. <laughs> so welcome, Cole. What's good? <laughs> I'm good, brother. Yeah, I'm excited getting everything in place so I can get down there. I'm just – I just can't wait to be there. So I'm just – the work work days is just dragging by so we just got to get to sunday we just got to get there and for for you that's going and other people that's going man what a lineup the um legends of the game ray and ed the honorary captain is jo t Payne at halftime and the afc championship game michael phelps running out the and, game and ball like it's just phelps, it's, yeah. it's everything like and you know you already know mellow is going to be going to be down on the field mm-hmm. i just so pulling out all the stops love. Yeah, but again, it's the first time they hosted the AFC Championship game as the Ravens. So I understand you you bring your big guns out for this one. That's it. That's it's it. The last, it's the last home game, regardless, win or lose. Bring it's been tough out. to get there with Brady and Peyton dominating the AFC for so long. So let's kind of dive into this award list. And as you know, the awards um finalists came out today, and I'm employing everybody to give me their picks and kind of tell me why they picked that person. And we'll start with comeback player of the year. And you see the five finalists on the board. Who you picking and why? So I think the common pick among this one is going to be Demar Hamlin, obviously, because the story is so significant and I understand it. But I, and maybe it's the hometown bias. I don't know. But I got to go with Joe Flacco, just like coming off the couch. And I know it ended poorly, uh, but just doing what he did to kind of keep the Browns in that five seed. And, you know, with the December the Ravens had, they very easily could have gotten into that AFC North battle. Mm -hmm. Uh, The the Ravens just took care of their business, right? So uh, I got to go with Joe Flacco in this one. Uh, I think uh, Baker Mayfield's a similar kind of story for what they're coming back from. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Matthew Stafford also is kind of an interesting one as well, but I got to give it to Joe Flacco. Yeah, and, and Tua's interesting, too, because the if we just take out this year, the last images of Tua is him stumbling off the field of concussions, like can barely walk, which was scary to see. 
and it didn't pop back up right like it wasn't an ongoing issue throughout the year which i definitely thought it was going to be so Mm -hmm. five very worthy candidates that was scary you know keep in mind it was two years ago and a lot of people probably forgot about it but to see him like his legs wobbly and he really not cognizant of what's going on what Tua did this year to lead if i'm not mistaken he led the league in passing that's you know i'm not trying to tip my pick and not saying Tua's gonna be my pick but that's impressive too you just got to think about all of them had good years but the one with the least stats but probably got the best story is demar hammer but flacco's a great story also yeah let's go to the next one uh assistant coach of the year you got ben johnson mike mcdonald todd monk and jim schwartz and bobby slowick I, part of me wants to give it to bobby slowick just because i think what he did with I'm not saying lesser talent because obviously Nico turned into a beast this year, but you know, Devin Singletary who had been on the bills for so long. And then he puts out that year that he had. um, He's definitely a guy that I was taking a very hard look at with this. And I mean, CJ Stroud is looks like the truth, right? Like that's going to be a guy that's good in this league for a long time. Uh, So I, part of me wants to go there. I understand Ben Johnson and all the great things that happened there. And again, this might be the hometown bias, but what Mike McDonald has done in Baltimore, and he has some great talent, don't get me wrong, but what yeah. he has done with this defense, and it's probably, and like you know, Coach, we study this literally every week, right. um, but just watching the way he has adjusted to the matchup in front of him, the way that they've kind of maintained an identity throughout the year of like, we're going to keep the ball in front of us and the players have executed, but then the little subtle changes that they've taken advantage of certain matchups um the way he's got that entire and this is kind of the difference maker for me he has the entire defense built or or bought into his system yeah we got patrick queen out there running stunts when he's got a clear line at the quarterback (laughs) and it's just like it's a thing of beauty they go out and they execute the play that is called without Mm -hmm. any concept of hero ball so that leadership buying into his scheme i think that's what pushes him over the top and that, that's a great point um that not playing that hero ball they just they just buy into the system and so um officially your pick is is mike right it's mike yeah okay just wanted to make sure because all of them even jim swartz with having the number one defense technically that that's pretty tough too because remember they didn't have any offense for the most part <laughs> Yeah, no, and I think, again, that recency bias, right, like where mm-hmm. Houston beat up on them is kind of stuck in my head a little bit, too. Uh, actual head coach of the year, you got Dan Campbell, Harbaugh, D'Amico Ryan, Shanahan, and Stefanski. I think Dan and Kyle are going to probably get a lot of love here. Um, mm-hmm. And I think Stefanski, going through the injuries they went through, I think that he's very well deserved to be in this running. But for me, it's D'Amico Ryan's. Just mm. studying them leading up to that game last week, it, very much what I just said about Mike McDonald, his team was bought in and they, I, I know people hated the comparisons, but it did remind me of the 2019 Titans where he had guys just fully bought in playing, you know, balls to the wall, flying around that football field. D'Amico just seems like he fit in and created a culture in mm-hmm. one year. And that, and I mean, Dan Campbell kind of already did it. So maybe that's why it doesn't impress me so much this year. Cause he kind of did it a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, D'Amico Ryan's building that culture and having everyone bought in well exceeding what the talent level was on their roster. That's what pushes D'Amico over the Ryan or over the line for me. Exactly. He made everybody on that roster up their game because none of us knew who uh Grinner was or Grenard was before this year. Unless you like was a straight up diehard Houston Texans fan, none of us know who he was, but we know now. We know now. Enzel Perryman, like their right. linebacking core flying around, like I, I, they were a fun team to watch. Yeah, and and young, and young, and young. Uh, there, next yeah, they'll be back. Another Texan. They'll be back. <laughs> Defensive rookie of the year: Will Anderson, Jalen Carter, Joey Porter Jr., Kobe Turner from the Rams, and Devin Witherspoon from the um, Seahawks. This is going to be a tough one. I think they're going to – Kobe Turner impresses me a lot. I think I had a tweet uh, when we were getting ready for the Rams game, so back in December, and I was like, I think Kobe Turner has the easiest easiest matchup of any player ever because Donald just – I did a breakdown basically on how we countered Donald, and I was like, Kobe Turner's going one-on-one nonstop. Every like play. Every play because they, they got to focus two guys on Aaron Donald. So, uh, But still, impressive performance from from him. Uh, not taking anything away from him there, but I think a lot of that has to do with his running mate. Uh, Jalen Carter was an absolute beast this year. Joey Porter Jr., 
Super impressive year, though. I think he got a little overhyped uh, towards the end of the year, uh, mm-hmm. but definitely some splash plays, and you got to love the story there, even though they're, they're rivals. Um, Devin Witherspoon, again, another guy, super impressive. A uh, guy that I loved his college tape. Like He didn't really have that long speed, but so technically sound, sticky. Uh, but for me, it's Will Anderson Jr., and uh, I just think – the building blocks he showed, I obviously got banged up towards the end of the year. So it took a little bit of luster off and mm. Ronnie actually handled him pretty easily last week. But um, that's what I was going to ask you. Do you think he was hurting? He had to have been, he, he didn't have the same juice off the edge. And that's not taking anything away from Ronnie. Cause mm-hmm. I mean, Ronnie was doing it to Greener too. When, when, right. when he had him across from him. Um, and I don't know, Ronnie can bend now. I don't know how, but uh, I don't really, uh, that there's a physiological question to be asked there. Um, but yeah, we, uh, we got some old school Ronnie last week. Yeah, it was that was fun. Um, but yeah, Will Will for me this year, just kind of studying him throughout the year. Even when I was getting ready for week one, watching his preseason tape, mm-hmm. he's gonna be the real deal. And you're yep. seeing why they spent so much capital to trade up and get him. All right. That their two and three pick really them that's the perfect example of risk versus reward. They went out and took a risk and, and traded back in and did whatever they had to do to get the third pick. So they satisfied the the head coach and the front office people by getting the two guys they want and paid off by them, get, you know, getting in the playoffs and actually going through the second round. And we're probably going to be talking about two offensive and defensive rookies of the year coming yeah. from the same team. Right. This is an interesting group because, um, you know, Laporta, super impressive for a tight end to have that mm-hmm. production. Um, it was well talked about around the fantasy football circles of it's just hard for a rookie tight end to produce. It's been pretty unprecedented. Uh, Jameer Gibbs obviously turned it on at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Bijan was very, very unfortunately hamstrung by a head coach that didn't like him for some reason. Wow. Um, for me, this is between Puka and CJ Stroud and mm-hmm. it's a tough conversation because Puka turned into that dude. And, sure did. Uh, it's just I had him in fantasy, so I'm a little biased too. But uh, I, I mean, this is this is going to be the where this lands. I think is the whole quarterback versus positional player decision mm-hmm. that many people are going to have to make. Um, because I mean, performance wise, I think if you take them pound for pound for their position, I think Puka outperformed. Puka as a wide receiver outperformed CJ Stroud, mm-hmm. both just super high level. So it's always hard to make that decision. Um, but with you know cj stroud being a quarterback especially a rookie quarterback that's probably going to earn votes i'm going to go with puka nakua on this one because i just think what he did as a rookie especially when cooper cup came back everybody was kind of expecting his production to drink i did too and who wouldn't right like Mm -hmm. i mean cooper cup was one of the best receivers well he was the best receiver in football Mm -hmm. two years ago uh so i mean that's a perfectly but puka just fit into that system and just so technically sound so bought into the system uh, running it exactly the way McVay wants. So I'm going with Puka Nakua. All right. Great pick. Next up, defensive player of the year. <sighs> That's a, <it's> a <laughs> lot of so many pass rushers. Why do they all yeah. have to be in the AFC North? Um, I actually was consistently saying I thought Miles Garrett should have been more mentioned in the MVP conversation just because mm-hmm. that defense was so good. And he was really what made that thing run. Sure Obviously, TJ Watt, Micah Parsons, Max Crosby, they're all elite 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 pass rushers darren bland did so many fun things with uh with the takeaways but for me it's miles garrett he's just he's too he's too good he's uh, you know i've seen it for years now he's impossible to kind of match up with so for me it's miles garrett he's just too good gotcha that's there's no really bad pickup here no. <laughs> honestly offensive player same, same with this one too i mean <laughs> um Wow, I didn't. Okay, so I didn't see these ones come out. So Dak got mm-hmm. into the offensive player of the year. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. So for me, obviously, we'll be talking about Lamar here in the next one. Um, but if we're looking at, and this is where the MVP impact on team versus stats conversation, I think, gets a little crossed over. But for me, this is a stats award, right? Mm-hmm. This is where you're looking at the best offensive production. Mm-hmm. To me, it's really a two-horse race. It's between Tyree Kill and Christian McCaffrey. Okay. And I'm going to actually go with Christian McCaffrey because I – and, I mean, both very worthy candidates. Um, but I just think CMC, what he was able to do from the running back position, the way he was able to produce for that offense. And the reality is he was the train – that made that whole thing run. He was that front engine. And you know what? So was Tyree Kill. So I can understand mm-hmm. any counter arguments there. You're really, when you get to these type of elite versus elite, you're 
it's, you're never throwing shade at the other guys, right? You're just trying right. to pick the top, the tippity top. So I'm going with CMC just to have that type of impact on that offense. Um, just too good. Gotcha. And lastly, uh, I would say I know, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's Lamar. It's just, and I, I understand the arguments um, for the other guys too, but I think if he didn't have the December that he had, I don't oh, yeah. even know if we, I don't even know if he gets nominated, if you want my complete honest opinion, but he just, to go through that gauntlet and we talked about it to death, just coming mm-hmm. out of the bye and having that, you know, the Rams were on the upswing. The Jags were still looking good at the time. Obviously the 49ers dolphins, we all know that story. Um, but just Lamar went out there with the AFC in his pocket and he just, he just took it home. Like, and yep. just, I, I don't really care about stats when it comes to impact on this team. Uh, if Lamar Jackson was not their quarterback, if it was Tyler Huntley, <laughs> We'd I don't be know. Draft, we'd be in draft mode. I don't even know. I, we might have beat the Steelers in week 18, but that's probably <laughs> it in that whole run. Um, so, yeah, we would be in draft. I was saying that, man, the Senior Bowl is next week, and I haven't even looked at the rosters, right. to be completely honest. I haven't um, looked at anybody draft. <laughs> yeah. Someone's like, what do you think about this prospect? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I got nothing. Um, I think the close runner up here is actually going to be Josh Allen. I think mm-hmm. it's kind of a similar thing, the way he they crawled back and kind of stole – their division i think that deserves mention um brock purdy isn't it for me i still think me cmc's either. the train that makes that like i don't think brock purdy should run. be on this list tyreek should I, be on this list i think trent williams should be on this list over oh, brock that, purdy. Yeah, that's too <laughs> <laughs> and dak again worthy candidate and i think the same argument could be made um but i just not to the impact that i think alan lamar and christian mccaffrey made on their team gotcha so um cole for the people that don't follow you let them know where they can find your work at Absolutely. On Twitter, Cole Jackson, FB, um, dropping clips all week. And then road graders with Cole Jackson over on YouTube. And I appreciate you for coming through and be safe on your road trip, man. Take plenty of pictures, plenty of videos, and let us know what you well Share share your experience with us when you get a chance to get back home and, you know, maybe aid us some phone videos or however you're going to do it. Absolutely. Thanks so much, coach. Thanks for having me on. And no problem. All right. This concludes part two. Got part three coming up shortly. Make sure you tune in. Hit that like button, subscribe, and share. Let's get to it.